This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 929, Personality Psychology and Early Retirement Resistance, part one, by Jacob Lund Fisker of earlyretirementextreme.com. And I am Dan, I'm here each and every weekday reading to you from some of the very best blogs on personal finance, Hope your week has been great so far and that you've been enjoying the posts that we've shared with you. Before we get to today's post, you know, hiring can be a pretty slow process, but Cafe Altura's COO, Dylan Miskiewicz, found a director of coffee in just a few days. How? ZipRecruiter. Four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. And now our listeners can try it out for free at ZipRecruiter.com OFD. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. For now, let's get right to our post as we optimize your life. Personality Psychology and Early Retirement Resistance, Part 1 by Jacob Lund Fisker of earlyretirementextreme.com Personality psychology is a very fascinating topic to me because I find it explains everything about humans. In particular, most disagreements come down to different personality types. People have different ways of making decisions, different ways of understanding, different ways of organizing, and different ways of relating to other people. And these ways can all be grouped. If done so, it becomes clear that some people are quite similar to other people in the same group, yet significantly different from people in other groups. This is similar to how cars are similar to each other, but different from trucks and different from motorcycles, etc. In a previous post, which provides a nice overview of the Myers-Briggs division of human personality, I described how the different types relate to personal finance topics. This is particularly interesting because few people seem to understand that people are actually significantly different. Consequently, they will likely come into contact with other types, with different types, and try to adopt unsuitable wisdom. This wisdom actually follows popular memes and dominates society at various points. About a decade ago, seizing the day became popular to what I'm sure must have been a great relief to the artisan personality. However, seizing the day makes no sense as a guardian who's got duties to attend to, and it probably does not fit into the plans of a rational. A current popular meme is to collect experiences instead of collecting things. This is the artisan talking again. They like experiences more than anyone else. Guardians like their houses, their furnishings, the cars. And if we talk about doing, they'd much prefer the experience of being promoted from bureaucrat level 6 to bureaucrat level 7. To rationals, collecting experiences matters only as a source of raw data. Rationals collect theories. Idealists are similar to rationals, except they are not out to increase their understanding and mastery of the world. They're out to increase their understanding of themselves. In this post, I will cover more on how rationals and guardians relate to each other's ideas. This is relevant since guardians make up almost half of the U.S. population, whereas rationals constitute around 10%. This means that guardians dominate the prevalent thought patterns of society. Society is, in a sense, infused by the spirit of guardians, and so everybody is judged according to guardian standards. Guardians effectively define the average person, simply because there are so many of them and so many who are expected to be like them. One exception is the 20-something-year-old crowd, which is judged by artisan standards. At this point, it is okay to be awesome and travel the world with a backpack. Later, artisans are expected, by guardians, to abide the guardian regulations and fall in line as responsible contributors to society. Rationals, on the other hand, find less value in extended travel. I have found that travel is not worth it, to me, because I have not been able to draw many extended conclusions from my travel experience. The chance of running into a guardian type in the U.S. is nearly 50%. The best way to describe a guardian is paternal. Guardians see themselves as very responsible people. They believe in a paternal structure to society. That is to say, they believe in hierarchies. The simplest possible hierarchy is the parent-child structure. But for society, there are many more levels. For example, college graduate, assistant manager, associate manager, middle manager, etc., Just look at your company's organizational chart to see what I mean. Titles are quite important to guardians. It's something to strive for. They define their career goals in terms of job titles to achieve rather than in terms of specific projects to complete. They love promotions. Even if they find themselves doing the same thing as before, 
the title upgrade makes them feel better. A guardian invented assistant renovation manager so he could feel better about his job as a garbage man. Similarly, job titles define their role in society. Guardians are possibly not capable of seeing society beyond what it appears to be, because mainly, they're not interested in doing so. To them, a person with a finer title is obviously a better person. A person with more money is obviously a more successful person, and hence a better person. Their main objective in life is duty. You gotta do what you gotta do. This means following regulations, and equally importantly, making other people follow the regulations. The actual form of regulations is rarely, if ever, questioned. Like parents, guardians are compelled to be of service to others, contribute to society, as they put it. If they do not understand personality typing, they are likely to believe that everybody should be contributing to society. Their particular contribution likely fits their personality type. It goes excellently with institutions and the particular line of thinking that goes on in institutions. Everything proceeds on a regular schedule and follows the procedures as laid out in the manual. If you follow procedure, you'll have a good life. Why? It says so in the manual. This is taken to the consumer side as well. Guardians get a college degree because it is their duty. They send their kids to college because everybody ought to go to college. They buy a home, in the right order, of course. Starter home, upgrade number one, upgrade number two, condo, retirement home. They value their lawns and their curbs because a well-maintained lawn shows that they are good at fitting in and adhering to accepted community standards. The people who run homeowners associations are guardians. Guardians work because it is their duty to work. It is their duty because it is so defined. Why? Doesn't matter. Guardians work nine to five because that's what their time manager tells them. After five, they may have other duties like lawn mowing and they will switch to those. However, if you take away their 9 to 5, they will have nothing to do, because society currently does not provide anything to fill that hole with. There is no structure to fit into. There are no titles, positions, and obligations which are immediately available in any traditional sense. Reasons for activity have to be generated internally, and guardians are not set up for that. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled Personality Psychology and Early Retirement Resistance by Jacob Lund Fisker of EarlyRetirementExtreme.com. And thank you again to ZipRecruiter. Hiring can be a slow process. Cafe Altura's COO Dylan Miskowitz needed to hire a director of coffee for his organic coffee company, but he was having trouble finding qualified applicants, so he switched to ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter's technology finds people with the right experience and then invites them to apply to your job. Dylan posted his job on ZipRecruiter and was impressed by how quickly he had qualified candidates apply. And in just a few days, he found his new director of coffee. With results like that, it's no wonder that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See why ZipRecruiter is effective for businesses of all sizes. Try ZipRecruiter for free at our web address, ziprecruiter.com OFD. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash OFD. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And that's going to do it for today. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you back here tomorrow for the Friday show, where we'll finish up this post and the week, and that's where your optimal life awaits.